Hi, uh, Gigi here, the slightly accented uh, eponymous uh, trader from the Boring Trader website. Uh, usual warnings, uh, I think they are on my second video. I keep saying that it's on my first video, but it's probably video number two, where I have all the warning about uh, how to read statistics, and especially how not to read statistics. Anyway, this was a, a particularly good week. It was the week number five from the 27th of April to uh, 1st of May. Uh, you might remember, or some of you may remember, that last week uh, the start of the show was the trade management style that was uh, the risk-reward ratio of one to half. Uh, this week was the other way around. The blue line is all out at one, one to one. And uh, the gray line is uh, all out at half. So risking uh, one to get half. Uh, this is good um, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, um, th that will give us indication of uh, how the different trade management styles uh, compare uh, according to different market volatility. Uh, there are some studies on the systems uh, going on uh, regarding w what is the best way to uh, achieve the maximum performance uh, without necessarily over-optimizing. Uh, without necessarily over-optimizing is a very important uh, issue here because, um, as you can see, we don't need to do that. If we go to what happens over the last uh, over the last five weeks, uh, you can see that all three management styles are pretty much the same. And actually, now the one to one has narrowed the gap with the 0 0.5. Um, so really, so far so good. It means that uh, the system is working, um, and uh, the parameters uh, and are still are still valid. Uh, the other interesting uh, thing to notice is that uh, you might see a pattern here. Uh, beginning of the week, central part of the week uh, is not particularly good. And at the end of the week, the system really takes off and the markets really take off. Uh, we've seen this uh, several times. And um, this is something we want to check. It's a little bit early to see the time of the day. Uh, statistics. Um, however, I want to draw your attention on um, a very important point about journaling. I am fastidious about journaling. Journaling is really the secret of uh, any trading career. Uh, testing, checking, measuring, and journaling uh, really uh, reduces the, the, the learning curve uh, dramatically. This has been my experience, not only with myself, with a number of, of traders. Why is it important? Because you have all sorts of information. The more you write down, uh, the, the more you understand about yourself and about the system. I can't tell you about myself uh, on these numbers, but I can tell about the system. Now, uh, we have f over 500 trades so far. We have over a month of data. And it's still early days, but uh, we can see some patterns are emerging. For instance, uh, we are trading at the moment uh, nine markets. Are they all performing well? Well, this is the table that tells you that some markets are performing much better than others. Uh, so, if uh, we have difficulties in following too many markets, we can pick the ones that seem to be working better than others. As, as you can see, uh, the UJ, uh, Euro, um, dollar against yen, and gold are performing better than others. I have some reservations about gold. Uh, because it's, a, it's been very erratic and the bid offer spread has been moving quite a lot. So I'm not entirely sure about uh, um, um, how good these statistics are for gold. Uh, 
Also, gold is the most volatile of all these markets, uh, and um, dollar against yen is the least volatile. So that's another interesting point, because you remember we are using fixed stop. They're not fixed forever. They're fixed based on the volatility of the markets. And um, for the gold, we, we're using five full points, uh, and f which is the highest. Uh, and for uh, UI, uh, we're using 10 pips, which is the, 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 the narrowest. Uh, still, this uh, studies about volatility and picking the right fixed stop according to volatility seems seem to be working. Not so well on uh, euro against Australian dollar or euro against um, uh, US dollar or uh, United States dollar against Canadian dollar. Um, so if we really have to uh, pick some instruments, uh, we want to pick uh, instruments that are uh, performing better. However, uh, I will really caution against it because we don't want to pick instruments that are too correlated. Um, so there might be that sometimes there is a very good um, performance of instruments that are very correlated, but that will mean that your risk will be double or, or, or multiplied by three according to whatever, however markets are correlated. So always pick uh, instruments that are uh, non-correlated among themselves. So I'm quite happy to dump, for instance, uh, euro against Australian dollar because I have Australian dollar against US dollar uh, that is working much better. And I already have one or two other euro pairs. You see how GY and GU cable or pound against the yen uh, seem to be quite correlated. Uh, so, if anything, I would probably dump one of those. Uh, US dollar against Canadian dollar is quite uncorrelated with most of this, so I would feel a little bit uncomfortable um, excluding this from this table. But this is just early days, uh, and we will need to check this um, uh, in time. Another example of how important it is to take as much uh, journaling and data as possible is this other example. And it's uh, what happens in the various uh, times of the day. What happens of all the trade, what happened to all the trades that have uh, occurred between 8 and 9, 9 and 10, 10 and 11, 11, 12. If you want to be more specific, you can actually uh, write 8 to 8.30 uh, or, or down to 5 minutes, although I, I don't think it's particularly useful. But uh, this will give you uh, an indication of when it's better to trade. And again, I have some theories about uh, why the period between 9 and 10 doesn't really work, hasn't worked in the last five weeks. Uh, but is, is it that important? Uh, the most important thing is to understand that uh, had I not traded between 9 and 10, my overall performance would have been much better. The other interesting point is that, uh, as you can see, about 80% of the return of this system happens uh, on trades done in the afternoon, especially from uh, after one o'clock. Um, this is something that we were we noticed uh, during the month, uh, but this is this is here in black and white or, or red and white, um, if you want. And this will give you another important uh, indication about. Uh, when to trade and perhaps uh, we should focus on this particular system on afternoons only and uh, we can do something else in the morning we can go playing or we can trade different systems uncorrelated systems so you see the more you write down about your trades the more of these kind of statistics uh, you have and the more you understand about the system. 
And I think that this is really very important. I try to keep this uh, uh, video quite short, so I'm not going to use any particular example uh, this week. Um, but if anybody has any questions, just you know where to find me. Thanks.